from The Lindsay Life. Do you know how to use stitch markers? Stitch markers are some of my favorite tools for when I knit and crochet. I'm going to show you all about stitch markers today. I'll show you how to tell the difference between stitch markers that are designed for knitting and stitch markers that are designed for crochet. Then I'll show you for knitting how to use stitch markers to keep track of where you are as you're working along and even to keep track of the right side and wrong side of a project. Then I'll show you how stitch markers work in crochet so you can see how to make the most of them there. Let's get started. All of these are different types of stitch markers that I pulled out of my notions bag. You'll see that there are basically two different kinds. Some are solid circles or rings or have a solid loop at the end. Others have some sort of opening like these. See how this one can open and close? And this one can do the same. It's kind of like a safety pin, but without a coil. So these types of stitch markers over here that are a solid ring or loop are used for knitting. You cannot use them for crochet because they'll basically get stuck in the stitches. These kind over here are called locking stitch markers. You can open and close them. These are the kinds that you're going to use in your crochet stitches to help you keep track of where you are. You can use them in your knitting and I'll show you how, but it's more common in knitting projects to use this kind. This is my knitting project. I'm working on a basic scarf and it has a garter stitch border and then a stockinette stitch middle section. Now the way this pattern works, I work in garter stitch for five stitches, switch to stockinette stitch, work all the way across, and then switch to garter for the last five stitches. Now I can keep track of that by just counting my stitches at the beginning at the end, but the truth is this is a great project for sitting and working on while I watch TV and I really kind of want mindless knitting without having to count. Here's how stitch markers can help me do that. Because I know it's the first five stitches that are important and different, I'm going to go ahead and work them in garter stitch. For this row, that's going to be knitting each stitch. So knit one, knit two, knit three, knit four, knit five. Now, because I'm done with the garter stitch section, I want to put a marker here to show me where one section stops and the next section begins. So I just take this loop and I slip it right onto my needle and I keep working. Now I'm going to go ahead and purl for the next section. If you're wondering about the way I purl, it's because I'm a combination knitter. You can check out my other videos to find out about combination knitting and why I like that method of purling. I'm going to get across to the end of this row and then I'll show you how we place the next stitch marker. Okay, I'm almost done with my purl section because I need to leave the last five stitches to knit. So I'm going to purl one, purl two, and now that I'm done with the stockinette stitch section, I'm going to mark it with a stitch marker. If you've got a locking stitch marker or one that slides in and out like for crochet but the loop is big enough, you really can use that on your knitting needles as well and it'll just slide like a regular loop. So I'm putting in the stitch marker and now that I'm at the garter stitch section, I'll knit. Three, last four, last five. So now that the stitch markers are in, let me show you how this makes life so much easier. When I go to start a row, I know that I'm going to knit at the beginning and I don't have to count one, two, three, four, five. I just knit until I come across to my stitch marker. Once I'm at my stitch marker, I know I'm switching patterns. Now in this case, because this is a stockinette stitch pattern, I'm going to go ahead and keep knitting, but I don't have to count stitches as I go. I can just go ahead 
and keep working. Now I did mention that you can use the locking stitch markers from crochet in knitting. If you've got a more complicated pattern and you need to keep track of which side is the right side and which side is the wrong side, you can use one of these locking stitch markers and slide it through one side to mark it. So now every time this stitch marker is on the side facing me, I know that this is the right side of the project. Now let's talk about using stitch markers when you crochet. When you crochet, stitch markers can be used to mark individual stitches on your piece. Instead of going between stitches like they do in knitting, stitch markers go directly into a stitch. That's why it's so important that they be able to open and close. Let me show you an example of how I would mark a stitch using a stitch marker in crochet. So let's say the next stitch was a double crochet stitch. And this was an important stitch for me to be able to find later. You know the top of the stitch forms a V with the two loops. So you take your stitch marker, open it up, and just slide it under the V right through there and lock it back closed. Now this stitch marker is just hanging out here while you continue to crochet. You can also use stitch markers to help you find chain spaces in a pattern. So I know a lot of patterns you'll be stitching along and then it'll tell you to maybe chain one and skip a stitch and work into the next stitch. Sometimes later on you need to be able to find that chain space so that you can work into it. You can mark a chain space by just going right through the big hole. So instead of going through the top V of the chain, I'm just going through the whole space and then locking my stitch marker closed. And this will help me when I'm going back to find the stitches I need. Now a lot of times when I'm teaching someone to crochet, one of their big problems with double crochet swatches is figuring out where to work their last stitch. So let me show you a trick for that using stitch markers. To start a new row of double crochet, you typically chain three. One, two, three. And then you start working in the next stitch and I'll make a double crochet in the second stitch right there. A lot of times though, when you're working back on the next row, it's hard to figure out where to place the last stitch. Use a stitch marker and place it into the top chain of the chain three you made. That way, when you're coming back the opposite way, you'll know exactly where to place your last stitch. Let me get to the end of this row and I'll show you how that works. Okay, I've been working double crochets and now I'm almost at the end of this row. So a lot of times it can get confusing as to how many stitches I have left to work. Because I've got this stitch marker in that top of the chain three, I'll know exactly where to place my last stitch. So I'm gonna do a double crochet in this stitch. Then I'm going to do a double crochet in the next stitch, the next B. And because I have my stitch marker right here, I know I'm not done and that I need to place one more double crochet right here. So I'm going to wrap, work my double crochet, and it's okay if the stitch marker slides around. Don't worry about that. Finish my double crochet. Now I can remove my stitch marker, chain three for my next row, and when I turn, I'll remember to take that same stitch marker and put it in the top of this new chain three to help me out later on. I hope you found all this information on stitch markers useful. Make sure to like and subscribe for more helpful crochet tips and visit me at www.thelindsaylife.com. Happy stitching!